All right, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is going to be a S-curve and what an S-curve versus a trapezoid is. Uh, and that's going to be in Studio 5000, and this is going to be using an Allen Bradley servo. So uh, you can see the wheel actually turning right now. You can see in the trend as well. Um, basically, that's what I have. Um, and I'll show you briefly the logic behind it. Um, when it comes to the MAM, that is what I'm using. I'm using an MAM to run one direction and then immediately after that going the other direction so it's very simple logic uh, the purpose of this is just to show you the s curve versus a trapezoid right now uh, we're currently running an s curve okay so just keep that in mind um, i do have a trend right here you can see uh, the uh, actual green line is the actual position and the orange line is going to be the velocity or the speed of the servo right so just keep that in mind and as we move forward what we're going to do so this is you see a nice subtle trend or a subtle move into its actual position and a subtle exit from its position that's called an s curve now generally speaking you use an s curve for uh, any kind of like things that you would mechanically uh, want to let get less wear and tear on maybe something safety wise or maybe even something you know when it comes down to the uh, machine has to be really, really, really precise, but it doesn't have to be really fast, uh, like a diverter or something of that nature, right? So, or fast and accurate, you know, super, super accurate, but really kind of have that subtle entrance, not be so, so uh, real, I guess, uh, rapid movement. Uh, so, well, and I'll show you that. So, you actually see. Now, first, what we'll do is we'll come in and change this S curve a little bit, and we'll kind of tune it a little bit. I'm going to change the XL jerk uh, to, from 10 to uh, basically 100. And what you'll see in this is going to be it's going the S curve is going to be a little bit sharper. Okay, so uh, with me just changing the XL and D cell jerk on the S curve on each one of these MAMs you'll see that it will be different. All right, so you'll see that it'll be a lot sharper. So it'll come up here and it'll be a lot sharper. Now, the, the first one didn't take, so let's actually let the, the second one come in play because um, the edits, so let's actually watch this. So right now, you'll see how sharp that, that drop was and you see the velocity of the servo actually changed. So we're going, uh, the velocity is getting a lot greater to get to its position quicker, but also uh, still allowing that subtle entry of that position. So in other words, keeping that servo movement, right? Keeping that movement as a gradual entry to the, its, its set point or to its actual position that it is set to go to, and then moving from that as well. So, uh, but you do see the velocity has changed just by merely changing the XL and D cell of the jerk, right? So let's actually change that now. Um, and we'll come in and change these to a trapezoid. So instead of an S curve right here, the profile, we're gonna change that to a trapezoid. I want you to see the difference in this. Now I'm gonna change both of these because again, I wanna change the move forward and the move uh, backwards. Uh, I do have actual speed commands that I have right here. I can change the speed if I want to. I can change the speed right here. So I do have all that in here so we can keep make, making sure we do have that accurate. So what we'll do is we'll change these to trapezoid and I'm gonna show you the trend afterwards. Now you can actually see the servo motor itself, right? It's rapidly moving. So the what's happening is you no longer have a real subtle movement in to that position or out of that position you have more of a rapid movement and more of a, it's still precise because the servo is precise, right? And that all depends on, that, that gets into a big topic of timing and, and the way it's set up is and the way that the physical attributes could be. But when it comes down to the difference between trapezoid and a S-curve, you have to look at velocity. You have to, and that's what we're, we're actually trending right here, is we're looking at, you can see the velocity is shooting way up right so the velocity is going way up to achieve its goal it's still going to the same position which in this case is 500 and then back to zero 500 and then back to zero so you can easily see that it's achieving its goal 
But let's just say we had mechanical limitations, right? Well, well, we said, okay, well, that's a little bit too, um, maybe maybe it's moving a heavy load. And then when it tried to move the position, it, it like faulted out over position error or something of that nature. Because it does, position error, believe it or not, it doesn't require a lot of position error to actually have that trip. Now that's based upon, you know, basically your faults and stuff of that nature. But keep in mind inside of your, um, your drive and stuff like that, you do have your limits, right? So currently the position lock is right here. We have our position error right here. So we're saying 66 degrees. Now again, that's based upon my attributes. So please don't kind of get off in that tangent as much as when we're talking about uh, getting into an S curve versus a trapezoid. So keep in mind the difference between the two, um, what the trapezoid is gonna do is gonna be more of a sharp movement, right? It's not gonna be real subtle. Now the S curve, again, will be more of your subtle move. It will still achieve its goal, but as you see physically, the, and I haven't changed it yet, but I'm changing it back right now in the logic, but you can see the motor, it actually runs real fast, right? So it, imagine that moving a really, really heavy piece of machinery, and then it couldn't stop it in time, or it had trouble, or it, maybe it was uh, deemed as unsafe. Um, or you just want to have it a little bit better as far as like maybe to again save the life of the bearings or to save mechanical wear and tear. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that back to S curve. Okay. And we're going to allow this and we're going to go to our trend and you're going to start seeing our trend even out back to our S curve. You see that? And that just goes and that again tuning an S curve um, is a lot easy. A lot easier than, than you think um, but to keep in mind the tuning of the s-curve depends upon your machinery depends upon what gearboxes or uh, pulleys or how many different attributes or mechanical attributes you have attached to your servo motor so to keep in mind all that will be equated based upon actual movement generally speaking you do that in your conversion constants and in your conversion constants that's going to be right now ours is set to right here uh, basically I, I have um, I, I was putting this in a, a rotary uh, now I've changed it to a linear so that the actual chart would show a little bit better for you and not show the rollover as much so it, when it goes to zero it doesn't go for to zero to 360 and 360 to zero so it kind of it would show you spikes and stuff of that so just keep in mind about what an S curve is and what a trapezoid is and then there are certain things to watch out for as far as S curves. Uh, me personally, I do not use the jerk units I, um, as in like time. Let me show you this real quick. So in this section, I don't tend to use this as in time or percentage of time. I usually use it as in my units that I'm currently using because it's easier to tune that way. It's easier to actually kind of get what your desired movement should be. So hopefully you learned a lot out of that video. And again, uh, when it comes down to it, this is the difference between a trapezoid and an S-curve using a Rockwell or an Allen Bradley servo motor with Studio 5000. Uh, this, and this version currently is version uh, 34, but it does not matter. Again, when it comes down to your versions, you could be running version 20 all the way up to 34. They all will work the same as far as the S-curve versus the trapezoid. So hopefully you learned a lot out of that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.